Hey there guys, Zach here from WinBeta and welcome to episode number 51 of the WinBeta podcast for the week of February 5th, 2016. With me is co-host Sean Michael. Hey there, Sean. At least till my Skype cuts out. At least till the Skype cuts out. And this is our as close to a one year anniversary as we're going to get. Uh, I believe the first ever WinBeta podcast was published on the 7th of February or the 8th of February, around there. And today's the 5th, so um, happy anniversary, everyone. Happy anniversary. You know what they say, Zach? What they they say? say the first year is the hardest, yeah. so it can only get easier from here. Can only get easier from here. As Sean's account keeps uh, quitting out of the internet. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. So this week we've got pretty much nothing. There's no news to talk about this week, so we're just going to sit here in silence. No. Uh, there's a, cu- a few things. A couple of new builds for mobile and desktop. Uh, Windows 10 is now a recommended update. Swift Key. Microsoft acquired Swift Key for reasons that we're going to talk about uh, later in the show. Uh, and a bunch of other little stories that we'll mention throughout the day. So, uh, yeah, Sean, how are you? Yeah, I'm pretty good. You know, week off of school, next week off of uni as well. You know what they call it here? They got this really stupid term. They call it reading week. Reading week. I've never but heard of that. I'm between terms. So I, I'm done with term one, had all my exams, and then have other modules coming up, two of which I've never done before. So there's no reading to be done. There wasn't like an assignment to do for the next week and a half. So they just call it Reading Week, which, but there's nothing to read. So I guess they want us to read, like, Reddit and 9gag? Like, I don't know what, I don't know what they want us to. Tumblr? They want you to read, read all the Tumblr they want. <laughs> just but reading. I'm not reading any coursework. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, how about you? Good week? Oh, yeah, pretty, pretty good. We should probably talk about how Microsoft is forcing things upon people. <laughs> you and I have different definitions of force. <laughs> well, Microsoft, I believe this was the week Microsoft switched Windows 10's upgrade as an optional upgrade to a recommended upgrade. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it will automatically download and install. Recommended upgrades, are, I believe they're not ticked by default, unless you've set up a certain setting in Windows Update that makes them download, uh, that makes Windows download recommended updates automatically. So it's not an important update because many people are kind of confused. They saw this story and went, oh, my God, they're forcing Windows 10. Technically, not true. What they've done is they made it recommended. But uh, if you leave Windows update settings by def- on just as the default settings, recommended updates are not automatically installed. So you should be OK if you haven't messed with your Windows update settings. If you have and recommended updates are set to automatically install, you may be in trouble. But The upgrade doesn't actually start until you say, yes, I'm upgraded, it's upgraded now. So there's still like a button you have to click to initiate it. So you're not going to just turn your PC off one night and then turn it on the next morning to have it running (laughs) Windows 10. That's not how that works. But it is, it's kind of, for many people, quite scary that Microsoft is doing this. And it won't surprise me if they eventually uh, switch it over to important and automatic because uh, they want people on Windows 10. Why wouldn't they? At some point, it's kind of dishonest for them like recommended's fine like if you look at like the definition of recommended whether it be microsoft's definition or like just a dictionary definition that makes sense they recommend that you have this they're saying it's it's above optional but it's not like vitally important because there's just security updates and stuff for windows 7 so until windows 7 or windows 8.1 isn't safe anymore compared to the newer operating systems i don't think they can up it you know what i mean yeah so it's, I think recommended, it's, it's a little odd because I think some people probably clicked recommended as like a thing. They were like, oh, yeah, I want this. Like they recommend it. They recommend it. That's fine. But so a, a few people might get like this prompt to get Windows 10 and be upset that it showed up there. But generally, I think it's, it's a really <laughs> – I'm actually surprised by how aggressive Microsoft has been with this push. Yeah, it's it's very. I mean, and what's peculiar is that Windows Ten they haven't made any changes to this to this rule. But Windows Ten is only free for a year. So what happens once we hit July twenty nine? Does the update just go away from Windows Update? Because they can't. Then it's just forcing like <laughs> product. Take this. Give me twenty dollars. It's <laughs> exactly. like those people on the street when you're like a tourist and they like tie a bracelet like around your wrist. Yeah. And then they're like asking for money. It's like I didn't even want the bracelet. And they're like, No, we gave you Windows Ten, man. Give give us money. <laughs> it's, I think that they've got to just make Windows Ten free because if they if they actually start pe- making people pay for Windows Ten from Windows Seven Eight Point One desktops, it's just going to completely halt the uh, 
the adoption rate of Windows 10 that it currently has. I believe it's on like 220 million now, 225 million. It's it's going up and it should keep improving as long as Microsoft keeps improving the operating system. Because I know many people are waiting because they heard by other people that Windows 10 right now is a little bit buggy, uh, which is kind of true. But as obviously with the Windows as a surface module, as time goes on, Windows will get better. And in a couple of years time, it may actually be a viable operating system to want to install on, on like a mass production machine or whatever else. So... Uh, yeah, um, I I, th- I think it, Microsoft is shooting themselves in the foot if they make uh, Windows 10 a paid upgrade. I can see why they'd want to make money. Obviously, they're a for-profit company, but I agree with you, especially with like Redstone. Isn't that going to come out in the summer? Uh, yes, a so, part one in the summer. So you'll be getting Redstone in the summer around the same time as this free update expires? I think it would give them some good momentum if they were like, Windows 10 is still free, we've decided to extend it, or whatever, by the way, there's also this major update, then people will get, you know, notif- their friends are saying things like, oh, it's still free, so they'll want to look it up, but then the version they upgrade, upgrade to is the stable Redstone 1 version, which has a lot more features and is better. So it's, it's going to be a lot of, instead of negative trends on Twitter and negative search engine results, it would be like, hey, they made it free and there's an upgrade. Isn't that great? You know, I, I, think, that'd be, I think that'd be a solid move. I don't know if they're going to do that. I'm not saying they will, but I agree with you that they should. Yeah, I'm, I'm having a battle with blocking fake accounts today. Cause yeah, I'm... yeah, when it's ever it's my stories, I'm just going to keep going and you can just block, <laughs> block, 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 block. Any fake accounts, please cut that out. I know I said the thing last week. I wanted... I wanted a Zach's hair account that's now a mistake because we have like 20 hair-related accounts and a bunch of fake accounts. So no more fake accounts, please. Live listeners, read the description of the live page. There's some rules there <laughs> exactly. that you should abide by, otherwise uh, you won't have a good time in the chat. And I'll just turn the chat off. i tell you what, if it keeps happening, I'll just turn all of the chat off. No chat for anybody, okay? I'm yeah. putting my foot down, do as you're told, I'm turning the chat off. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, what right, else so happened this week? Oh, Zach does now. that. I, 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 Zach's going to go black listeners while I talk about yes. the Windows Store. <laughs> so as we were just talking about, it's it's um it's it's past halfway of a half a year about. It's actually almost exactly six months since Windows 10 initially rolled out on July 29th of last year, and there are some stats that have come out on how many store views there have been or visits to the Windows Store since that launch. And now, mind you, Zach said there are approximately 220 million active users of Windows 10. That technically includes things like Xbox One users, which aren't actually, they don't have access to the Windows Store yet, as far as I, right, Zach? They don't have access yet Mm. to actual Windows apps. So this number is pretty high because the the reports are that there's been 3 billion visits to the store since Windows 10 rolled out just July 29th last year. That's a pretty big number. Of course, I have no idea how that number stacks up to other stores, probably much lower than than like the Apple Play Store, or Google or Apple Store, or Google Play, but it's still 3 billion is a big number. And so, as we've talked about, they want a billion users. They want lots of store visits because then they can go up and they can say to a company, "You should build an app because 3 billion people looked at our store in only 6 months, 7 months, whatever it's been." So I think that's pretty solid. That's a pretty high number. And I actually, I'll stand by what I've said before, but it's swaying me even more so. I think any app that isn't phone specific, they're really going to start looking into making a universal app. So there are some apps that just like they're built to be on phones. They're just not meant to to be on a PC. Uh, an example in the sphere that I like, like Pokemon Go is meant for phones because it literally involves going to specific locations geocaching on the go obviously that's a phone related app but if it's anything that can be on your pc banking whatever i honestly think that they could make an app for that and they see these numbers i think it'll really help so i I think it's a pretty big deal zach do you you think this could translate into more apps or is this just kind of uh well i mean as you've frozen uh yeah i think it will translate into more apps i think it's a good thing i mean Developers like numbers, right? And I'm talking to you, Sean, and the internet. Uh, developers like numbers. So um, 3 billion is a big number, and 3 billion equates to 3 billion potential purchases of, of someone's app or downloads of someone's app. So that is a good thing for <laughs> developers. Welcome back, Sean. I'm just going to assume your answer yeah. <laughs> based on the last 10 words that I heard. Yes. 
<laughs> uh, right, I'm so still I'm still battling the comments. I'm, I'm yeah, very I'm close sure to are. stopping it. Oh, right. Yeah, I, I guess that I heard the, the point you said. That, oh, that, that is you? a good point. Three bi visits has nothing to do with actual purchases. Sean, but... you're now a moderator in the comments. So when I'm talking about a story, you have the ban hammer. You can just ban all the fake yeah, accounts. We can, we can play them. I've always wanted. <laughs> right, so let's uh, move on to... Are you done with that story? Yeah, go ahead. Right, let's talk about new builds. Hooray! Uh, this week, Microsoft released a, another new desktop build. Can you believe it? That's three builds in three weeks. That's This is the fast wing, baby. This is what Microsoft said they were going to do. And they they actually didn't disappoint this time. So Microsoft's fast ring means that build 10.5... No, 10.5. 15.257 was released to insiders. Again, no new features, which is becoming kind of a, a trend now. And Microsoft even mentioned, and I've said this before as well. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> wow. <coughs> you okay there, buddy. Definitely excuse me. Uh, Microsoft said this week, uh, and I've said this before, that um, uh, since builds are becoming more frequent, you will see less huge changes build over build. So if we're having one build a week, it won't be like before when there were 30 days between a build, whereas we had like, I don't know, this version of the start menu and this UI around Windows and this notification center. And then in the next build, it was all new and updated. It, it won't be like that no more. It'll be slowly and gradual. So maybe in one build, we'll have a start menu. Then in the next build, we'll have, oh, the start menu, the UI here changed a tiny bit or whatever else. That's how it's going to be from now on. And I know many people aren't happy with that, but you can always just go to the slow ring and just experience it in slow motion if you really want, because the slow ring will have... Uh, less builds so the changes will be more um more jarring i guess or more dominant and noticeable than compared to the fast ring zach they gotta be like i know they're gonna keep changing the code forever but they gotta be close to like done with these code only updates don't you think <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like they eventually they're going to start point. giving features but, to insiders to test them out. But here's the thing: most of them haven't haven't ever really shared development of Windows builds this early. There's been leaks, obviously, of past versions of Windows, but this is like the official releases. <coughs> and um, with, with the with the initial Windows 10 Insider preview, Microsoft started sharing builds way past the, the initial code incitation, I guess, of um, under the hood stuff. So. This time we're seeing development happen earlier, so things are kind of kicking off slowly. Microsoft could have wait. Microsoft didn't have to start sharing Redstone builds in late December. They could have waited until mid February, uh, and then gone right. Here's the first Redstone build. It's got a bunch of new things in it. Try them out. They decided and made the the decision because most insiders wanted it. They wanted more builds regardless of features, and that's what we're getting now. There's a bunch of people like, but we want features, and they just don't seem to understand the nature of development. It's always stuff you don't see first, then the goodies later. That's just how development is. So, if... do, do you think? Do you think a little bit? This is Microsoft. One being being able to isolate an issue. If they send out code change only, but there's still an issue, then that shows them this isn't from. Because remember, we had some really weird causes for issues. They were like, "Oh, this isn't working because like was one of them like a title bar or arrow or something." Yeah. And so that's like a very specific thing. But but you get there and it's like, I don't know it. I think this is Microsoft kind of covering up or isolating an incident where they can say, we change these code things. It's no new features. There's still an issue that proves that it's this. And then it's also what you said, which was the general general part of development. Yeah. It's... Yeah. Yeah, so build 14257, now available for fast ring insiders if you're on the insider program. Um, Microsoft also released this week a mobile build, a cumulative update, as they call them, although... My, big confusion over what cumulative update actually means regarding mobile. It's not the same as PC. There was a story this week, or was it last week? I don't remember. There was a story that said uh, this this um, 10.586.71 for mobile was the first real cumulative update, as in like it matches how PCs do it. So if you don't know, PC cumulative updates actually patch specific files. They don't increase the entire build, whereas on mobile they do. So when you download these air quotes cumulative updates on mobile, you're downloading an entire new build completely recompiled as dot seven one. Whereas on desktop, you're downloading just a few different files that have been updated, which is just it's completely different. That's why the cumulative updates on PC are much smaller, or usually much smaller than what. It's a silly phone. naming scheme. It's very silly. It's it's just marketing. Microsoft. Uh, and it's, it's stupid how they decided to call them cumulative updates because a number of insiders are seeing this as Microsoft aren't releasing any builds for mobile. Microsoft has released like four or five mobile builds for mobile 
uh, since 10.5.86 was compiled. They just, since they're naming them cumulative updates, it's like nobody understands. Either way, this, this week's cumulative updates was um, released and it includes just a number of more fixes. Uh, Microsoft is working on another fix already, build uh, 10.5.86.104, as I believe is right, is in Microsoft's internal servers, internal rings right now. Uh, again, no idea what's new or what's fixed. I, I know, I actually do know what isn't fixed. You know the swipe issue that people are having or the keyboard? That's not fixed in 104. Yeah, they said that's coming, I guess. Yeah, but that's coming. Not it's, on the next one. Not in there yet. Also, the apps list, uh, the background, the fade background thing also isn't fixed either. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Um, no, I don't. I, I, I've talked about this one before. Naming schemes on these builds, it really shouldn't be a decimal point. It should really be like a colon. Because <laughs> if it's 10.586.71 and then it goes to dot .104, the way the decimals work, 104 is lower than 71. I don't think it's an actual decimal. So it should be like colon it's or not, like version. It's just their building it system. Like 10.586.v71 <laughs> or something People like People like, I mean, my mother isn't ever going to see this. She's not going to be like, oh, I'm running 10.586.104. <laughs> I'm just saying decimals don't work that way. <laughs> 1.104 is lower than 0.71. <laughs> they should have named it 0.76. I know it's that doesn't how, how it works, but they need they need to rename this. Just does it does it is driving me crazy. What's annoying is that Microsoft's actual current public build for devices that are on Windows 10. So for those who don't know, I think I've mentioned this before. Uh, there is a way that I don't think it's public, but there is a way to force update your phone officially to Windows 10. 10. Uh, it, Microsoft employees in, internally do it. That's how they get their phones updated. Uh, but once you're on Windows 10, you receive updates whenever Microsoft has them out. So .29 is available currently. If I updated like a Lumia 630 to 10, Windows 10 officially, that update would roll out straight away. Right. And right now, that's the only update. That's, they haven't pushed out anything more since. So the Lumia 950 uh, and 950X and 550 and whatever devices that are running Windows 10 officially uh they they're running 29 and it's like why don't you just release 71 or 104 or just release something newer quite soon please <laughs> yeah I, I have commenters they're, they're saying it's not a desk i know they don't use it like a decimal but if you look at it it's clearly a decimal point it's a full stop <laughs> what is it it's a period in the middle of a number it's just a circle <laughs> like a tiny circle if you look really closely when they type it there's actually a little hole in the middle yeah if you look if you, if you zoom really far in you can see the ninja cat it's just sitting <laughs> in the middle of it no um, no more ninja cat we'll get to that later yes but yeah that's pretty much it so if you're a mobile insider new bill for you hooray oh there you go yeah uh, you mentioned this a little bit in your uh, key keyboard. You mentioned the, the workflow keyboard, how they're, they're still having issues with spacing. But there's been a much much bigger keyboard-related story from Microsoft. Woo, 100 live listeners. Um, we, we, we have a different story, and that is that Microsoft has officially acquired SwiftKey, which as if anyone's on iOS or Android, they've probably at least heard of it, even if they don't use it. This is a very popular keyboard on those platforms. Uh, this is one of those you know stories that developed. It was like breaking. We, we think that this is going to happen, and then bam, it was official within a day or two, which is great because then we don't have to go to the podcast with like half the information. So long story short, um, they bought it. Most people, I think, have kind of. I think most people understand that they purchased more than just a keyboard. Like yes, SwiftKey is a keyboard, but the way that it works is that it's an AI predictive texting machine that can predict sentences and that sort of thing. So Microsoft, of uh, course, I was reading on The Verge, and other people have said this as well, just all around the web. That like, I, I'm pretty sure that other people pointed this out, but I know at least The Verge pointed out it's, it's an AI predictive thing that that really helps with artificial intelligence, keyboards, that sort of thing, and, and that's that's right up Microsoft's alley. Like they love AI, they love this sort of thing, they love predictive stuff, and that's part of this purchase as well as the obviously they didn't purchase the people, but the contracts that those people are going to continue working on this thing, you know, for pay uh, are coming as well, which I think this, you know, so most people, I think, understand that. But some people were probably like, hey, why did Microsoft buy a keyboard? They already have a swipey typing keyboard, which is not to be confused with swipe. That's a completely different swiping keyboard. But you were about to say something, Zach. I was going to say, uh, I would say that this is a good thing for Windows phone users, as it means Microsoft can get, can utilize SwiftKey's 
good side. But then I realized Microsoft doesn't care about Windows 10 Mobile no more. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all for iOS and Android. Hooray! Yeah, well, they're going to be they're going to be mixing. Um, they're going to be mixing. I think. Wordflow with Swift Key. I still swear that it used to be called shape writing, but in any event, they're going to be combining these together. Uh, so I, I think that it's overall a good thing for a lot of things. It's another service that my, a Microsoft's own service that people are going to be using on iOS and Android. I guess some people view it as a bad thing, but that's, I think, in the views of Microsoft higher ups willing to spend reportedly, though I don't think it's been confirmed yet, $250 million. That, that's a lot of money. So obviously they know why they're doing this. You don't just spend that will and ill. That's not like getting the Nando's. I mean, this is a big deal for them. Even though they're a big profit company, that's still $250 million. If you're the one pushing for that and it turns out to be a terrible idea, that's on your head. Yeah. So I think it also really helps with AI and stuff. And that, that's a big thing for them. So, yeah, I think I hope that it ends up with a better keyboard for all. But from a Sean beating that drum in order to point this out this means that i think technically microsoft has two keyboards on ios but still doesn't have a keyboard that swipes on windows 10 mobile or I, windows 10 Pro. i think they will convert i think swipe keyboard or swift key whatever it's called will merge into whatever microsoft's working on for iOS. Well, i sure hope so. i mean that's the word the word is that they're going to be merging obviously that takes a lot of work but over time that's i think that's the goal yeah it's I mean, I would be annoyed by this, but then when I think about it, Microsoft's keyboard on Windows 10 Mobile is already quite stellar. It's pretty good keyboard compared to yeah, I, iOS and Android's offerings. Uh, I mean, so Swift Key's pretty great in its own way, but I mean, compared to the shape writing, which I'm going to call it now, shape writing on Windows Phone, it is fantastic. Uh, Microsoft really pioneered the whole key- keyboard on a phone thing because it's the best. Everybody says it. You cannot yeah. beat a Windows Phone keyboard. And now Microsoft is bringing the Windows Phone keyboard to iOS, which I know for a fact will not be as good as what's on the Windows Phone because um, um, Apple's implementation of third-party keyboards is rubbish. Swift Key for iOS isn't as good as Swift Key for Android because yeah. Apple just has a terrible... Just It's just not good. Well, anything that isn't made by Apple is probably not going to be as good on iOS, right? Like, Android's pretty open for these third-party types of things, and but It's Apple's like, pretty... if, if I had to leave Windows Phone right now immediately and, and join another platform, if I wanted to stay tied into the Microsoft ecosystem as closely as possible, you'd go Android, right? Because you can switch out Google Now with Cortana, you can move whatever Microsoft... Microsoft can release apps, and you can just make them default, and it's like... Yeah, you can just live with the Microsoft ecosystem on an Android device. On iPhone, however, you have to kind of avoid all of Apple's services and stuff. So if you want to use Cortana, you can't just tap, tap the home button. You've got to like avoid Siri to get to Cortana and stuff. It's like it's diff- more difficult on an iPhone. So, so you know, um, back. Oh, I just lost my train of thought here. <laughs> Think about it, Sean. iOS Swift. It'll come back to me. Oh yeah, yeah. You know how like Cyanogen is? I don't know how to pronounce. It. Is that how you pronounce the? Uh, yeah, the Android I say phone? Cyanogen as well. <laughs> What if Microsoft just made like a really modded version of Android with live tiles? It, but you say you laugh. That would be a thing that they could do. They could they make just their own like, Android. For, like uh, Microsoft for. on Android can fully run all Android apps, but has live tile support and like every Microsoft app. I would actually get a device that did that. I really, really would. But you wouldn't have universal apps. I wouldn't care. <laughs> <laughs> Caring level would be at zero at that point. I would That'd get be one. so funny. You know, I Microsoft... see a future in that actually. My, if Windows 10, my, Microsoft's future idea might be Android. <laughs> well, then I don't know, maybe, but I, I, it would be so funny if, like, because I can just I can see this now. Microsoft would come out with a mod. It works live tiles, looks like Windows, has all the support that you see for like Miracast, Bluetooth, and everything. Has all the Microsoft apps, but it's technically Android, so it gets full Android support. I would see that just skyrocketing in terms of popularity because people be like, oh, it's new, but I still get all my apps. Yeah, absolutely. But can, can you imagine Microsoft if they sat there and they have an Android mod and their own and their own isn't popular, but the Android mod yeah. is? I, That'd be so funny. i tell you what Microsoft could do. I mean, they've, they're already trying this with the, is it the Xiaomi? The Mi 4? Yeah, the IMA? Mi 4. I don't know how you pronounce it. The Mi With 4. an X, but I think there's a Z sound. The yeah. Mi 4, yeah. The Mi 4. Uh, they, Microsoft released an uh, Android, um, Android, Windows 10 Mobile ROM for it. 
if Microsoft could like do that for other devices, I think that would also in, you know pick up traffic. Because imagine being able to run Windows 10 Mobile on your Samsung Galaxy S6 or on your HTC One M9 or whatever the latest thing is. It's like I would do that. I would buy. I'd actually go out and buy this hardware just so I could run Windows 10 Mobile on. I'd finally have a, a true flagship that I could run Windows 10 Mobile on. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, no, like I said, I, they're they're going to have to be a little more creative with their solutions here, but no, we could see what happens there. Yeah. So the the news here though was SwiftKey was purchased. It was a relatively big purchase, obviously not as big as others that they've they've had purchases in the billions before. But as a response to the SwiftKey purchase, we had an article on our site this week written by Max Slater Robbins, and it was after SwiftKey. Here's who Microsoft should acquire next. So before we get into what Zach and I are going to do here, we'd love the comments, the live comments, to chime in. And you put this in the after comments as well and discuss with each other. But as part of the live show, let us know either what type of company you think. So if you think augmented reality, but you don't know one specifically, obviously you can just comment that. You don't have to know the ins and outs of every startup in the world. Or a specific company. So oh, they should really buy uh, this, this or that company. But what Zach and I are going to do is we're going to somewhat briefly go through the big names mentioned in this article, say should Microsoft buy them or should they not buy them and, and why. I don't think we need to spend a lot of time on – some of them to me are kind of like an obvious no, but some of them I, th I think are worth discussing. So comments, let us know which one you think they should purchase or even or look into it. <laughs> Someone said Snapchat. Uh, <laughs> But first up, let's see, we got a few of the enterprise ones. I'm going to pair these two together, Box and Salesforce. Do you think Microsoft should, should try to purchase either of these? No. No, I don't think so either. I think they're too big. They'd be way too expensive. Um, they're direct competitors. I, I think they'd really have to fork out cash yeah. to make this even I'd reasonable. Don't, that wouldn't be a good purchase. So Salesforce, let's see here. Salesforce brings in... 1.4 billion dollars in revenue per quarter. Can you imagine how much money Microsoft would have to rake out just to buy it? Yeah. It's valued at 44 billion dollars. <laughs> Definitely not a good buy. Like Microsoft's not going to shell out like 100 billion dollars just for just for Salesforce. Mm. So, yeah, I don't I don't think either of those are are um here's what I really think they should buy or at least look into it to see what they would charge. Wolfram Alpha. Have you ever used Wolfram Alpha before? I don't believe so. Okay. So what it is, it's this really powerful search engine, like researching tool. Uh, I used it in a math class that I took. You could type in just something in real language for conversions and, and math. Let me give you an example that's in the article here. Alpha can calculate the stock price of two companies, such as Apple and Microsoft, over time, plot that on a graph, and tell you the market cap too, and all that's done just by searching, quote, MSFT versus AAPL. It gives you all that information just from that search. Right. So it's a really powerful search engine, and and was it Max that wrote this one? He, he said, yeah, it's Max. Max suggests that they, they should work look into buying this so that they can combine it with Cortana, and I would also add Bing. So if they were going to buy any of the ones that are on this list, I definitely think Wolfram Alpha would be a perfect guide to Cortana. I really think that make make it more powerful. Yeah. Uh, so I, I definitely would recommend it. Because search engines, they're all about search engines. Then you'd really have Bing would really start providing a, a high-end service compared to, to Google in a lot of different ways. Some people use Wolfram Alpha like religiously. It says here in the article that like the FBI uses it and stuff for a lot of their research. So. Yeah. Uh, if I see that, <coughs> Evernote. Do you think Microsoft should buy Evernote? Not really. I mean, they don't need to. What does Evernote offer over OneNote? Not really. Yeah, I don't know what they would. Apparently, some people use it more for authoring, like books and stuff. I don't really see this as a. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess you could get like you could buy it for the user base. Is Evernote more popular than OneNote? If, if it was more popular, then I guess I could see a point to buying per, it. Per user, it might be just because it's. I think. I think some people won't use OneNote because it's like a Microsoft product, but Evernote they would use no matter what platform they're on. Yeah. So that that Evernote might fall more into like an Accompli Sunrise category, which is like a well-made thing that's on platforms. Yeah. No, but, I, I, yeah. I'm gonna say no for Evernote. Yeah, I wouldn't. I don't know either. All right, here's one. You 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 take this one more than me. Valve. 
What, the gaming company? Yeah. Nah. Why would they need them? Merge Windows 10 gaming and Xbox, maybe? I don't know. What, Steam and Xbox in hand in hand? Yeah. Uh, that would be an interesting thing. I, I Definitely. But I don't. that wouldn't be a purchase worthwhile, I don't think. No. And can you imagine how much that would cost? It's just, yeah. And anyway, again, again, these people need to take this into Factors Act. There'd be way too many games. <laughs> way too many games. You can't have that many games. True. Cannot. All right, Magic Leap, augmented reality company. Uh, never heard of them. Never heard. All right, it's a big augmented reality company. I don't think they've got Hololens. I don't need it. Yeah. Adobe. Uh, no. I don't think they need to buy Adobe because Adobe works so well with them already without purchasing them. Exactly. I mean, they're good partners. Like, Adobe is like the definition of Microsoft the, having their cake and eating it too. The only thing, the only good thing I could see Microsoft, the only good outcome I could imagine if Microsoft were to purchase Adobe would be they just cancel all of their Mac apps and just be Windows only. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like the opposite. Like that would be ironic because I think a lot of people view max for creation but if you took away the adobe suite they'd really <laughs> like, oh, lose no. that. <laughs> that'd be hilarious i'd just buy it just to do that but that's the opposite of what they're doing microsoft buys these and then leaves them on the platform you know i say some of these are really like it's valve i would never imagine i say that microsoft bought minecraft <laughs> remember that they purchased minecraft they could buy anything really i guess they could buy valve that they wanted all right, let, let's take a look because we we have some time. Let's go through any comments of people people suggesting My, things. That they're they just there going, Microsoft should buy Win Beta. Microsoft should buy me. <laughs> <laughs> have you? I think they have Roper to do the build demos though now. Hmm. With his hat, you don't have a hat, Zach. Yeah, I don't. Microsoft, don't should, Microsoft should buy Nintendo. <laughs> some people have said that. I don't think that would work. No, neither would I. There's spirit. I mean, I love both companies, and you gotta you gotta love. Both of these, because they neither of them get third-party developer support, so you get to use the same complaints <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, like no one makes Wii U games and no one makes Windows Phone apps, so like you really get the same complaints. But their spirits are really different. Like Nintendo, to me, it, even their CEO that that died last year had this like, said something like, "In my job, I'm a CEO. In my mind, I'm a programmer. In my heart, I'm a gamer." Mm. And the, like I, I'm, I probably botched that, but the heart, like in his heart, he, he was a gamer, even though he was the CEO of this giant company. Yeah. And I think that that really epitomized Nintendo. So they have these like great gaming ideas, but I don't mean to seem, sound mean, but they've had some really poor marketing, really poor implementation. They don't have the support. Kind of sounds like Windows 10 Mobile. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think their, I think their spirits are pretty different than what Microsoft's shooting for right now. Yeah. So. Not to mention their hardware. Nintendo makes a ton of money off of um, mobile gaming sales. And Microsoft doesn't, they aren't in that platform at all. I don't think Microsoft needs to focus on gaming uh, right now. They've got HoloLens as a potential gaming console as well as augmented reality as it's in itself. And they've also got Xbox. They don't, and they've got their own game studio, Microsoft Game Studios. So, I mean, I don't think they would need to buy anything game related now. They've got Minecraft. It's like, I think, I think they're fine for the gaming side as of right now. It'd be lot, more. It'd be more just buying companies for patents or like ideas or user bases. Well, yeah, that's what, Microsoft. I, I think this is. It's kind of a. It, it's funny, you know. My I, I've only been on the Microsoft beat for probably a, a year and some change now. My but my dad's. He's been around the block a lot. You know, he's my dad's in his sixties, and and I said, oh, Microsoft had this, and then they bought that company, and you know what he said. Well, he goes, that's right up Microsoft's alley. They've always done that. Hmm. Like, they just buy up, like, little companies and buy up patents and buy things and yeah, stuff. Yeah, they've done it. They've done it many, many times. And, and so it's just funny because, like, Microsoft's, like, known as, like, big, giant company who buys up little companies who have ideas that they like. Yeah. I don't think that's bad because no. they're paying fair market value. I just think it's, it's, it's funny to see that, like, I'm on this beat, like, all the time. But, like, my dad, who uses computers but certainly doesn't, like, cover them for work, he was just like, that's so Microsoft. It's like exactly up there. You know, in regards to this SwiftKey um, acquisition, um, I read a story about the uh, the owners or like the people who owned it before they sold it to Microsoft and found out that, uh, this is a story from The, uh, the Independent. Um, the I think there was three guys who founded SwiftKey originally back in 2008. And the SwiftKey founder, Chris Hill Scott, sold his share of 170 million Microsoft app for a bike. 
So pretty much he left the company a few months after it began in 2008 and it wasn't worth it much back then and it was only <laughs> then through who owned the shares. He sold his shares and it equated to amount, around the amount of a bicycle and he bought a bike because he's like, oh yeah, this is cool. Got a job elsewhere, etc. The other two guys stayed on. 170 million Microsoft bought. How much did they buy? 170 million, right? The, the reported number is 250 million, but I don't think... Is that dollars? I mean, yeah. this is the independent, so it's in pounds. Yeah, so in pounds, that's about right. 174 million pounds. Yeah, the two guys who currently run it walked away with 25 million each, I believe. <laughs> and and the the first guy who founded it walked away with a bicycle. I would be gutted. Yeah. That's just... Oh. Yeah, I would feel bad. That's... <laughs> There's... There's this TV show I watch called Community. Oh, it's, it's it, a... um, apparently his Twitter account, he tweeted, this was uh, uh, the biggest make I ever made was selling my shares and then he made his Twitter account private. That's awful. Oh, oh that's sad. <laughs> I don't even want to say the joke I was going to say because that's a comedy it's... show and this oh, is someone's imagine... real life. Oh, I just, I could, I would just, just end everything. Oh, that, that's, a, that's too bad. Oh, I hope he likes his bike though. <laughs> yeah, I hope it's a good bike. Uh, yeah. If, if you made that much money off the sale maybe, maybe the owner should toss them like a million dollars do you reckon just be like you made it like you didn't develop it for five years or whatever but here's a million just for coming up with the idea with us mm. yeah uh, I, easy I, to I, say I, though, that's that. somebody else's money yeah I, I i think i would do that but then when i was looking at the 25 million in my bank account again uh nah <laughs> yeah. that can stay with me you sold your shares come... sorry some people have really suggested this and i think this is worth mentioning People really want Microsoft to buy a competitor to YouTube. Yeah, I don't know I, why. I, I don't know. They want them to like buy Daily Motion, which recently got but, a Windows 10 Universal. But app. nobody watches Daily Motion. No one uses Daily Motion. No uses... Like I know, I know it's used, but not as much as YouTube. But, why do I they mean, need a competitor? Vimeo's barely used, and I've actually visited Vimeo. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. It's like YouTube's yeah. the only place right now. Twitch. Yeah, I, I mean, Twitch would be a good uh, purchase. I did Google buy them. I don't well, remember. I don't, know, I don't know why Twitch. I remember there rumors being uh, there was rumors that Microsoft would buy Twitch because Twitch is, uses Twitch. That'd be an interesting purchase. Yeah. Yeah, Twitch is a big a big one that they could buy. Yeah. Microsoft should buy everything. So. Yeah, that's about what the chat. You're right, Julian. <laughs> that is what the chat's saying. Microsoft should Microsoft should buy Apple. <laughs> yeah, Microsoft, even though it's worth Microsoft more. should buy the world. Microsoft should buy Alphabet. Microsoft should buy Mars. <laughs> Take a patent on the entire galaxy. Oh, did you, uh, did you hear about this, the Fine Bros this week? Yeah, I did. Oh, that's, that's more of an after party a, thing. That a was big that? mess. Hey, maybe we should make a reaction video. <laughs> no, because I wish we can now. They, they, <laughs> they withdrew all their uh, trademarks for it. So, yeah, we could absolutely. Oh. We, should, we should title this podcast When Beta Reacts to Microsoft Acquisition. Oh, can we still do that? <laughs> can we do that? When Beta Reacts to Swift Key Acquisition. <laughs> Yeah, for people who don't know, I guess we should mention it now. We've mentioned it in the podcast. For those who don't know, the Fine Bros, who are uh, an entertainment group on the internet, um, they, they tried <laughs> to they they tried to uh, trademark or or copyright was it trademark trademark the word react. For you, you've probably seen their videos. It's like the kids react to, elders react to, blah blah blah. Very funny. They're quite funny, yeah. But they wanted to kind of license their model, so they wanted to they wanted people to pay them to. Uh, to do react videos in their format i mean they'd give you like uh graphics and stuff for it it'd be like kind of a a network thing but not a network thing it's like you pay us we'll give you all the resources you need to run a, a show similar to ours in our format uh but the internet flipped out about it and uh they lost like five hundred thousand subscribers and uh so much so over the weekend uh they kind of just went okay fine we we, we take it back we're not doing it no more yeah exactly and it was a bit of uh, drama on the internet over the last weekend so <laughs> Yeah. It's pretty fun. There you go. But that is the perfect title. That will be the title of this week's episode. <laughs> Microsoft Reacts. <laughs> With... Beta Max. There you go. All right. Let's move on to a couple other quick stories. Actually, we don't have to do it quickly. we got time. Uh, moving on to the next story. WhatsApp on Edge. Yeah, this is, uh, this is an interesting one. This is quite an interesting story. So you can now use WhatsApp Web on Edge, which is fine. I've used it before. I tested it today to make sure it actually works. Is it WhatsApp.com? And... It's web.whatsapp.com. And then you just have to scan the little thing with your phone, and it works just fine. Mm. Um, if your phone's on battery saver, that'll screw you up. So just a, just a heads up. Like, it can it can turn off the syncing. 
But yeah, uh, long story short, this was available on like every other browser in the world except for Edge until today or yesterday or whatever. And now it works just fine. I have it on my screen here. It's great. I love WhatsApp because my family's in America and I can message my mom and dad easily with WhatsApp. And I didn't want, that's just the platform that is easiest for us because for mom and dad, it's like text messaging. But now you can do it from your computer as well. I don't know why it wasn't on Edge. It isn't an extension. We'll get to extensions in a minute. But it isn't an extension, so it wasn't like they were waiting to be able to implement an extension. I think a lot of the underlying stuff was already ready, but right. they just didn't push it through. And now it's here, and it's working fine. So this is one of those, it's great that it's here, but why did it take so long? Uh, developers. Do you think it was that much of a change to make this work on Edge? Like, it's apparently they, they've been working developing. on this for months. I mean, not many people use Edge anyway, so I don't think it was a priority for them. Yeah, I guess. I wonder if Edge has similar usage numbers to Internet Explorer, where there are, like, millions of people who use it just because it's the only browser they know about. I doubt it. Not yet. Not well, yet, anyway. There were people that used Internet Explorer because yeah, it was because, the only thing they knew about? Yeah, but remember, Edge has, uh, Windows 10 has Internet Explorer as well. Well, yeah, but you have to find it. Just search for it. Can you? Is it that easy? Yeah. Internet. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, and you can just pin that to start and never use Edge your whole life. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> um, oh, uh, we should also mention how Microsoft... I don't know if this was something people knew uh, already, because I didn't know it, but Microsoft mentioned... I mean, they, they kind of just went over all the stuff that they're playing with Edge this year. Uh, I'm not going to go for all of it because it's more developer-related. But one of the things they did mention is extensions. And extensions are, again, coming soon. It's pretty much what they said in a nutshell. But they also mentioned how extensions would be managed for the Windows Store, which, as far as I know, was not known until they announced that. Because uh, I had no idea there would be... I, I just thought it would be like a little marketplace in Edge. But no, it's through the Windows Store, apparently, which is very interesting. Along with everything else. Along with everything else. <laughs> it's, it's You know how, like, like Costco, like Costco, you'd be like, you can buy your groceries... Get your prescription fulfilled, pick up a basketball hoop and a tire. <laughs> <laughs> this would be like the Windows story. You'd be like, I bought Tomb Raider, I bought a movie, I bought some music, and Sling Player extension for my browser. All in one store. Yeah, that's actually not bad. And then, I mean, there, was pl there were plans to have a, um, a bookstore in the Windows store as well, back in early Windows 10 development builds. That went away for reasons unknown. Uh, mm -hmm. But that would have been cool. You could have also buy an e uh, bought an ebook. Oh, actually, hmm. I don't know about buying a book company, but that is something Microsoft could look into. Don't they own Barnes and Nobles or have like a deal with Barnes and Nobles or did I have? have? No idea. I, no, I, no I idea. remember that being a thing for a while. Uh, I mean, the, yeah, I don't know, competitor Kindle maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but that's different than buying an app or a keyboard. You know what I mean? That's how, yeah. that's buying another ecosystem you have to support. Mm. Like Groove Music, they have to have deals with record companies and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's not like when you use a podcast app and it just feeds it from wherever it is. Like they have to go and make deals and they have to hire people and stuff. So it's different to have like Microsoft, like a giant bookstore online. They'd have to make deals with publishers and stuff. It'd be a hassle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's interesting. But you know what this does? If the store really is getting billions of page views or, or store views, that means when extensions do come out, they'll put it like at the top of the store and they'll be like brand new, now Edge extensions. So anyone that's on Windows 10 that's looking for like a game or, or, or any you know music or movies or whatever, they're going to see Edge extensions. Yeah, so that actually right. could turn into a really good thing. Yeah, that, that, yeah actually, you're 100% right. More people will be like, oh, Edge extensions are finally here. <gasps> Let's look at Edge again. <laughs> then they'll be like, ad block, ad block. And we're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Please wait five minutes. Uh, oh, our, our ads aren't that bad, are they? I yeah. hope not. Uh, we should talk about a uh, a thing. The this is very one. important. This very is probably this this is probably the biggest news of the week. What's better, Sean, Ninja Cat or Flying Monkey? <sighs> Ninja Cat. I should get a picture and put it on the stream. Yeah, let's uh, see. Microsoft uh, have a new mascot uh, for the uh, is it the Chinese New Year? I don't remember where it was. Yeah, called. Chinese New Year is this week. It's you uh, the monkey. Yeah, and they just made a flying monkey, and it's going up against the Ninja Cat. Uh, see if we can find it. Want to say Chinese New Year might actually be in like two or three days. Uh, why? Yeah, of course, doing a Google search for it isn't going to find it, is it? I'm not going to... Just search for it yourself. Flying monkey. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, so Chinese New Year comes out, so you get the flying monkey on a cloud. Uh, so there's that there. I don't know, is this going to replace the Ninja Cat, or is no. this just like them being festive? No, I don't think so. 
I don't like the, the flying monkey. I won't be. I'll be honest. Well, things have to be organic. They have to develop. Like Ninja Cat was like them is almost like a joke. Yeah. And then it just got this like monolithic like cult following of people wanting stickers and stuff. Mm. You can't force it. This is like a cool festive thing, but I don't want them to push this on us. Yeah, like, it's like making it's making Grease the movie. Kind of, oh, this was made it again. Let's make Grease two. Like, no, don't do that. <laughs> I think they did make. They it did Grease make it Grease two, and it sucks apparently. So did, didn't the end of Grease one involve them flying into the clouds in a car? Yeah, they kind of. How did they have a Grease two then? Because movies, man. Because. <laughs> I don't understand. They like flew into heaven in a car. Like, isn't that the end? Are they in no, heaven uh, in Greece too? In Greece too, it's different characters. I think these are the important questions. <laughs> no, I think it's a nice festive thing. Uh, I could, you know, the ninja cat should stick around though. It's pretty cool. Mm. It's like again with Halo. Like the first three Halos were amazing, and it's kind of just going downhill from here. I mean, Halo four yeah. or five are good, but yeah, were they as good as one through three though? No, no, they weren't as good as one, two, three. Also, Even with the jetpacks, mate? My camera's completely stopped. <laughs> Even with the Halo 5 jetpacks? Yeah. That didn't make it cooler? Oh, I mean, I mean, it's good in, in different ways, but you know what I mean. Yeah. It just doesn't have that old feeling. You should sign off because I my camera's stopped. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Do we have any of the stories for this week? I don't think we do. All right, then I guess we will we'll wind down a few minutes early here. All right, this has been the Wid Beta Podcast, episode 51, for the week of February 5th, 2016. Win Beta reacts to Microsoft's <laughs> purchase of Swift Key. As always, I am one of your co-hosts, Sean Michael. You can find me on Twitter at Sean underscore Michael underscore UK. And can they hear you, Zach? Uh, yeah, they can hear me, yeah. All right, where can they find you on Twitter? Uh, they can find me at Zach under, uh, Zach B underscore. <laughs> <laughs> yes, at Zach B underscore. Find WinBeta on Twitter at WinBeta DOT org. You can find us on Google Plus, Facebook, uh, you know, whatever news feed, timeline, whatever you're definitely in, into reading, please uh, add us in there. You'll get all sorts of news updates. I see it pop up on my Facebook from time to time. You know, if you're not on Twitter, put it on Facebook. Big stories come in there. That's great. Happy for you to join us live if you can. We're uh, live every week, Friday, uh, 8 p.m. England time, I, wherever you are, you know, use Wolfram Alpha. <laughs> yeah. Figure it uh, out. Before we sign off, quick, I just want to—I I quickly found this. Uh, It's—I know you can't see it, sure, but it's, uh, it's a screen grab from our first video podcast because it's our anniversary. We should uh, take a look at that. That's oh, what we all looked like, and there's Michael. If you don't remember Michael, he was the original founder of the podcast, and uh, that was an hour and a half long that episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's cut in half. Yeah, it's cut in half. But yeah, that's how far we've come along. Come on, look at my hair back then. Jesus. <laughs> should go back to that. Ah, oh, there you go. But yes, we were... Anything else from this week? Uh, we'll no. do the after party. We can all reminisce on the year that's been. Yes. But... <laughs> look at that. My terrible camera. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, we'll go reminisce and, and feel all nostalgic you back then. I hope that's not the thumbnail because then I'll really confuse some people. <laughs> anyway. All right, guys. That's been the podcast for this week. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.